Well, to talk more on the passing of Abba Kiari, the Chief of Staff to President Mohamed Buhari, is with me in the studio now, and a political analyst and a former House of Assembly candidate under the Young Progressive Party, Moses Naikwe. And he will be discussing the life and times of the late Chief of Staff to the President, even as he's been laid to rest. Um, good to have you join me, Mr. Moses. Thanks for having me. Well, first, let's talk about the surprise confirmation that um, Abba Kiari had tested positive for COVID-19, then the shock that he actually succumbed to it. Did you think he would beat it? No. Uh, well, I, I don't want to say whether I think he would beat it or not, but um, considering um, the, 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 the peculiarity of this virus and how it operates with the immune system and considering the age of the chief of staff, you know, it, we, we all knew that he, he was, you know, he was in a very dire, dicey situation. Mm. And can we blame his death on the state of our health care system in any way? Yeah, absolutely, yes, I will. You know, but people will say, um, you know, um, we have this uh, belief in Africa that um, um, what God says will happen will happen. But yeah. um, um, if we do the right things, you know, in fact, just imagine um, uh, Asurok, um, um, for the past how many years now, they budgeted over 10 billion naira for the clinic in Asurok, mm. and then nothing is there. You know, just like the first lady said, that there's nothing inside that clinic, and the, the chief of staff has to be flown somewhere for specialized treatment. It shows that um, um, it's indicative that um, the government and the people in authority have not paid enough emphasis on the health on the healthcare se uh, sector. And um, let me use this word. Um, metaphorically and they are reaping the benefit for the negligence of um, the healthcare system. Moses, many people heard for the first time yesterday um, his very stellar credentials, his exposure and um, key positions across various sectors of the economy. Did you see him in a different light when you heard all that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, the president said he was a gatekeeper to the presidency. And um, what, what is the job of a gatekeeper? The job of a gatekeeper is to stop evil from coming in and to make sure good comes in. And um, if we look at the country over the last five years, maybe he has succeeded in stopping evil from coming to the presidency. Definitely, he has not allowed good to come um, into the, the country for the general pop, uh, populace, uh, because the, this government have failed to, to deliver in every um, spheres of life. And, um, we, and many people called him the de facto president. And um, we can see that from the, the situation of the country and the economy, he, 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 we didn't really feel his impact, yeah, considering now how powerful he was um, in the presidency. So I'm not impressed by his credentials. Okay, that's his credentials. Well, his death has elicited a lot of reactions. Some were positive, some were negative. What is your assessment of the late chief of staff to the president? Well, my, my assessment, um, if you will permit me, I have something, um, um, the, the, the just um, sacked commissioner uh, of works in, um, in Kano mm. um, gave a vivid epitaph of um, the late um, chief of staff. Don't worry, my phone will not ring, it's on flight mode. I just want to read something to you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, he said, uh, in translation, win-win, Nigeria is free. Abba Kayari has died in the epidemic. The death of, Abba, the death of a Mataya, if he's a believer, the person is perfect. Then continuation, Magadi said, for the good of Nigeria and Mr. President, the CSO office should be split. A private, uh, principal private secretary and a humble manager of, of the office of the C, C, uh, COS. It is currently too powerful for a non-elected official. Rea okay, he now said, Magadi now said, he said, um, Mag uh, he said, um, Nigeria is bigger than any individual. While praying for the president's late support staff, our ask is to prevent a repeat, listen to this, a repeat of his non-accountable domineering error. And finally, he said, in institutional democracy, no individual is bigger than the state. Our interest is to get equity and capacity in the highest position of power. It's not personal. I am not a hypocrite, and I will not pretend while a, at a personal level I pray Allah to grant Abba Kayari Jana. I sincerely believe Nigeria needs a better COS, period. So this 
is Harry, so we would like to see him in a positive light, more like. Yes, what I want to say is that I want to adopt what um, the late commission, I mean, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 the commissioner that just been sacked, um, uh, Magaji said. Mm. He, he was, the, his high-handedness, according to him, this is a man from one of his kindred, I don't know, it is close, close, mm. it's from the north. And for him to write such a thing about the chief, the, the chief of staff, it goes to tell you how high-handed um, this man was. So it's, it's, I want to adopt what he said as what I say and think about Abakayari. Okay, um, let's move on. A senior colleague of mine um, who had a working relationship with Abba Kiari described him as very professional and results-driven. And the president has also described him as having a true focus on infrastructural development. Did he live up to this billing since 2015? Infrastructure? <laughs> My sister, you, you and I know what's going on. And if they talk about, you know, the, this, this administration has been bent and they have been talking about infrastructure, infrastructure. And it's unfortunate that maybe the infrastructure is still, is still in the realm of, um, of their minds. We cannot see it translate. We have not seen it translated into what is on ground. Right now, when they talk about that he was the, he was, he was the brain behind the, 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 the infrastructure revolution in the, by this government, it's, it's, it's so funny, it's so appalling, and it staggers my, log, my logical acumen because Nigerians cannot see anything on ground. Look at the power sector, look at the roads, nothing to show about infrastructure, and yet a lot of money has been sent on, spent on infrastructure. This goes to show you that there is no sincerity on the part Moses, of this government. Moses, in my public affairs analyst, that's where we're going to have it, leave it, to leave it now. Glad to have you back. You're watching Arise Africa. The World Health Organization, the WHO, says there is no proof that people who have recovered from coronavirus have immunity to the disease. Epidemiologists at the WHO said there is no evidence someone who has been infected cannot be infected again. Maria van Kerkhove, a senior epidemiologist at the WHO, said antibodies tests will help measure the level of antibodies in the blood, but does not mean such persons with antibodies are immune. She said many tests for the ailment being developed are pin, pin prick blood tests, just similar to instant HIV tests. And I still have in the studio with me Moses Nayekwe. Moses is a public affairs analyst and a former House of Assembly candidate who will be discussing COVID-19 in the country. Um, Moses, good to still have you with me. Now, the number of Thank infected you. people continues to grow from state to state, and we have a total of 541 in Nigeria. How effective would you say this lockdown is in containing the spread of the virus? Well, um, it's, the, the, the problem is that um, those numbers are still minimal because we, our testing system is not, um, we don't have capacity to actually test. You will be shocked that if we really have the capacity to test, we should be in our thousands right now. But um, nevertheless, the spread of this thing from state to state is, indic is indicative that the federal government didn't do what they are supposed to do when they are supposed to do what they did. L imagine um, 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 uh, President Donald Trump had to sh uh, stop flights from China to, to the U.S. as at um, February the 2nd, but it took Nigeria up to March um, 18th to do the same because maybe they were waiting for members of their family to come back from wherever they went to. So it shows that the federal government, due to the lapses in in, the, in leadership capacity and our ability to respond to issues effectively has led to this spread. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it, these numbers we have, they are not the adequate numbers because we don't have capacity to actually to test. To actually test. Yeah. Well, critics have said the lockdown may not necessarily be an effective strategy in Nigeria and maybe Africa at large. What, what's your take? Yeah, it's, the lockdown will not be an effective strategy in Nigeria and Africa, uh, particularly, generally, because, number one, you can't lock people down and you don't give them food, you don't give them palliative measures 
people need to come out to get what they eat or what to eat. Over there abroad, where they have effective lockdowns that have produced um, 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 measurable results, they give them food, they give them money, they give them um, um, palliative, um, they give them money to help them sustain themselves. Right now, there is no money for people to eat, people don't have food. Every time I walk on the street, people beg me for money, people beg me for food, because they need to come out and feed themselves. Majority of Nigerians live from hand to mouth. So when you, you cannot lock them, you cannot lock them in their houses and expect that they will stay. Two, there is no power. You stay in the house, there is no light to help you enjoy yourself at home. So the, the, what the lockdown is supposed to achieve, we may end up not achieving it. And we have since seen an increase in the number of infected people on a daily basis. Are we likely to get to a curve anytime soon? Uh, uh, my dear, I, I, I don't like to be a pro I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom, but I, I pray. And uh, because in terms of capacity, we don't really have the capacity to handle uh, what, is, what is happening and um, what may likely happen. But right now, I don't see the curve you know, um, shifting or changing present, uh, currently, you know, or in the near, in the foreseeable maybe days or week. But um, let's hope that it doesn't get out of hand because I, I don't see the numbers uh, actually declining. It will take a miracle for the numbers to start declining, uh, to, to stabilize and then to start uh, declining because yeah. it, we are just on the, we are just, you know, at the mercies of fate. On an upward swing, you would say. Yes, yes. Well, in, in your estimation, are people adhering to the lockdown, or do you sense a lockdown fatigue? My, my dear, number one, the lockdown fatigue is not even the issue. Number two, how can you say people should respond to the lockdown? When you don't give them food. In my area, in Ibeduleki, they were sharing food with APC card. If you're not an APC member, they won't give you the one cup of uh, rice or two cup of rice that we're sharing. So they have politicized this thing. There is no food for the people, and they say they are sharing money based for the vulnerable people, and you have BVN there, you cannot send money How to people. How verifiable is this claim of yours, Moses? I'm telling you, I'm, I, I reside at Ibeduleki. I know what I'm telling you. Okay, so the Lagos State government has reassured Lagosians that um, protection of life and property will not be compromised. Can we really go to sleep with our eyes closed with threats from faceless criminal groups? I, in fact, recently I don't sleep with my eyes closed because um, um, these days um, some the youth in my area they have resulted in burning tires at night, then also hitting gates with uh, machetes and cutlass, telling people to come outside and help secure the place. You know the fumes from the tires that they burn affects affects me in my in my in my in my bedroom, affects my my my, my family. So there is we can't sleep with our eyes closed as long as there is hunger in the land, as long as there is no food, there is no money. There is no way there can be security. Let's not deceive ourselves. If we don't get the basics, we must do the fundamentals. You can't, you can't, you, you, you can't put the, 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 the cart before the horse. You, we have to do things right. You cannot tell people to, not to commit crime or to stay in their houses. And they, when you don't give them what to rely on. It's in spite of assurances from the Lagos State Government and the Inspector General of Police that security is a top measure. Uh, my sister, I want to ask you, is it the governor that will come to your house and secure you? Is it the, the inspector general that will come to your house to secure you? Before you even call them, the, the security apparatus in the country is already overstretched. So we are at the mercy of, of anything that happens. There is, let me tell you, the, 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 the estimated arrival time of these people, even if you call them, if they manage to pick your number, they would have killed you before they, they, they come. So we, we are at the mercy of God. There is... We have to just pray for God to secure us. There's nothing. And look for a way to secure yourself. We've been looking at, you've been mentioning palliatives. Let's talk about the federal government palliatives. Have they been adequate in terms of process and implementation? The thing is that there, are, there, is, there has been no palliative. There has been no palliative. Every other thing, just like uh, the, the, the Senator Ndume was saying, he said that it's, the, it's, a, it's fraud, it's scam. There is nobody that can tell me that there are palliative measures by the federal government. Anything you hear in line of palliative and the rest is fraud. Look at Tinubu told them that they should share this money based on BVN. What have they done? They've done nothing. And today, Lai Mohamed will say they've given how many million people money. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs uh, will say they have done this, they have done that. And there are no, nothing to show for it. I, I cannot understand. This government is, 
it, it staggers my logical acumen because I cannot comprehend how they, 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 they politicize everything and they just want to, to kill people in their houses this season. I, I can't understand. Nothing. There is no palliative, my sister. It's us calm. But that's, um, I, I would think, you're referring to federal government because um, in Lagos State, where I reside, I know that the Lagos State government did provide some palliatives for residents in the form of um, food stuff, rice, gari, beans, and we all saw that. My, 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 see, you all, those are media, media propaganda. I am telling you that in my local government where I stay, if you see what they were sharing, they were sharing it for a people with cat carrying members of APC. And it was, is it two to cup of, it's not even up to one dairy cup of rice. I am telling you there is no palliative, whether in Lagos State or at, at the federal level. These things are all scam. Let nobody scam you. It's, it's fraud. Nothing is happening. People are on their own. An Igbo youth uh, movement leader has alleged that the distribution palliatives is skewed against the Southeast geopolitical zone. What's your take on that? That's why I tell you. This is, I, 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 permit me now, I don't like, I, I would like, I, I, you see, the, the Northerners, they, okay, look at, they closed, they, they closed down the South, and they are saying they can't close down the North. Now, it comes to sharing of money. The major beneficiaries, according to them, because I, to me, there are no beneficiaries, that is to me, and to the general public in the, and, the, and the, the general masses. Look at the number, numbers of people that are benefiting from the North in terms of the distribution of this, um, the, 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 uh, the stimulus um, money. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, to the, it's cute to the North. It's favorable to the North. Nothing is happening in the South. Nothing is happening in the, in the Southwest, in the Southeast, in the South South. Nothing is happening. Even at the Niger, in Niger, that nothing is happening. So, my dear, this is nepotism at the highest order. This is, I don't know what to call it. It's, it's, it's complete fraud and sham. Well, a lot has been said about Nigeria not um, doing enough in combating the pandemic. Um, but what does Nigeria have at its disposal? Hmm. To combat this epidemic? Yes. My dear, we don't, uh, I, 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 am not, I, I am not a hypocrite. I will tell you the truth. See, number one, we don't have the infrastructure. We have neglected our infrastructure for a very long time. Number two, we have refused to train our um, medical, to, to improve our medical staffs. We have, we have, we have refused to, to train our doctors, to train our nurses. So that we don't have the physical and the map, uh, the physical infrastructure and the mental infrastructure to handle this um, this uh, this crisis. All this government has to handle this inf this uh, this uh, this uh, pandemic is propaganda. Nigeria is not ready, and we have nothing on ground to handle this epidemic. We are at the mercies of God. I am telling you the truth. We have no capacity because we have neglected the institutions, our medical institutions, for a very long time. So Nigerians should go on their knees and just begin to pray that scientists will discover a cure, because this government have nothing on ground. They have no capacity to handle this issue. Surely we must be doing something right when you look at the number of deaths recorded in Nigeria. It is minimal, if I must say. <laughs> My sister, the number of deaths recovered is minimal based on the official report. I, I, I don't pray for people to, to, to I don't want the death to, to rise. That is not my, my, my wish or my prayer. But let me tell you something. If things, when this testing, when the, the if, God, God forbid, if the number of cases increases now and we run out of space, you will see that, God forbid, I don't want to be, you, you will see that the, this number of death that they are postulating you will see that there is something, it, we will not even be able to sit here and talk about the number of death. Thank God, the number of death. The, the thing you should ask, what are they using in treating these uh, this so-called people that are discharging? What are, the, what are the processes? What are the treatment patterns for this number of people? And the people that are dying, why are they dying? So we need to understand the demographics of all these statistics that they are bringing out so that we can be able to appreciate them, what they are doing. So I just say we are in the, we are in the hands of God and we have no capacity to handle this. Uh, All right, this that's pandemic. where we're going to leave it now. And Moses Naik, a public affairs analyst, I'd like to thank you for joining me on Arise Africa.